Stay tuned for Channel 7 Action News at 11. We're always taking action for you. We will be back after these brief messages. Please stay tuned to us on Channel 7 Action News, WXYZ, Detroit. Channel 7 Action News will return after these messages. Once again, Channel 7 Action News will return after these messages. Thank you.
The state's attorney, Marilyn Mosby, saying Gray should not have been arrested in the first place, that the knife in his pocket was legal. But once in custody on April 12th, she says Gray was put into this police van, legs shackled, hands cuffed, but officers didn't put a seatbelt on him. Mosby says it was in that van Gray suffered a fatal spinal cord injury. And when he asked for medical help, officers didn't call paramedics or offer first aid. The driver of that police van facing the most serious charge, second degree murder. Today is a momentous step on the road to justice for Freddie. But the police union calls the charges a rush to judgment following heated demands for action back, 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 back. from across the country. No officer injured Mr. Gray, caused harm to Mr. Gray, and they are truly saddened by his death. These officers did nothing wrong. Tonight, hundreds of demonstrators rallying outside of Baltimore City Hall say, This is just the start of their fight for justice. This will not stop until the police are behind bars. All six officers were released tonight after posting bond. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Baltimore. An inflammatory Facebook post about the violence in Baltimore forced an assistant Wayne County prosecutor to resign today. Deanna Walsh stepped down after a social media firestorm over her comments suggesting a simple solution for dealing with people who attack police, quote, shoot them. The prosecutor's office says that remark was out of character for Walsh. Well, now the year 7 First Alert forecast said an incredible weekend ahead of us. People are enjoying the warm night in Royal Oak, but the best is yet to come. 7 First Alert Chief Meteorologist Dave Rexroth is in the Weather Center right now with more to celebrate, really. Short sleeves and tropical music. How about that? Mm -hmm. Beautiful first tonight here. Felt like it today. We really jumped. Yesterday, we were in the 40s and 50s. Today, 70s for most of us. Outside right now, 58 degrees. Here comes some clouds. It's not a problem. Really nice and calm tonight. The weekend warms it up. But can we keep it dry? Warm air holds warm moisture, you know. And once that rain and shower and thunderstorm chance gets here, it's going to stick around. We'll look at the next week in your 7 first alert forecast coming up. All right, Dave. Thank you so much. Two communities that are so close together but often seem worlds apart will join forces tomorrow for a peace and unity walk. 7 Action News reporter Camille Amiri is live in Gross Point tonight to tell us what this is all about. Camille? And Stephen, it all starts here tomorrow morning at Mac and Kaju. Hundreds of people are expected to attend and it will end about a mile away in Detroit. Bright pink and green ribbons tied around trees in honor of Paige Stalker, the Gross Point teenager who was shot and killed on Detroit's east side late last year. Tonight, her mother Jennifer and others are getting ready for the Peace and Unity Walk, being held tomorrow starting in Gross Point and ending in Detroit. Bringing our communities together and uh, just standing up, standing up to what's going on, the violence, the crime, trying to pull everyone together. Tragedy and its aftermath often bring people together. That is the case tonight with Frederick Wilson II. Last year, he made a video that went viral. Organizers of the Unity Walk saw it and invited the Las Vegas natives to come to Detroit and speak at the event. I did it around the time when the Ferguson riots were going on. It's not about the Ferguson riots, but the general message of the video is just, you know, take responsibility for what's going on in your life. Both Stalker and Wilson say that everyone can do their part, no matter how large or how small. Things like this walk, you know, keep bringing people together, keeping the issue in the forefront. And everyone is welcome to attend. Again, it starts at 11 a.m. For more details, you can go to our website, WXYZ.com. For now, we are live in Gross Point. Camille and Mary, 7 Action News. All right, thank you much, Camille. Now, here are some of the other stories making news across Metro Detroit tonight. We'll start with an update from Warren. A police lieutenant arrested more than a week ago on allegations of having a gun while intoxicated and Interfering with a police investigation in Detroit is back on the job. Warren's police commissioner told the Macomb Daily the lieutenant was put on leave for just one day with pay while the department gathered information. The incident is still under investigation in Detroit. Moving on to Howell now. In a deadly case of road rage, jury selection begins on Monday for the trial of Martin Zale. He's charged with murder and the shooting death of another driver on Grand River last September. Zale's attorney plans to argue he acted in self-defense. Vice President Joe Biden will be in Detroit this weekend for a big event. He will serve as a keynote speaker at the NAACP's 60th annual Fight for Freedom Fund dinner. About 10,000 people expected at Kobo for the largest sit-down dinner of its kind in the world. 
A new event on this Freedom Weekend brought together the African American and Arab American communities in Detroit tonight. The Freedom Institute Justice Award Tribute honors members of the judiciary for their contribution to civil rights. Channel 7 Editorial Director Chuck Stokes emcees the event, which is said to be the first of its kind in the nation. A Detroit native is coming home Monday to launch his bid for the presidency. Retired brain surgeon Ben Carson has a big event planned at the Music Hall Center for the Performing Arts in Detroit. The conservative Republican will meet with local pastors, and there will be an assembly at the school bearing his name before the announcement, 10.30 Monday morning. All right, it is the final weekend before we head to the polls to vote on a measure to fix our roads. So what's plan B if proposal one goes down in flames? We go to Lansing next to get answers, and some of them might surprise you. Plus, Kwame Kilpatrick claims that he's broke what he's asking a federal judge to do next. And is your bed making you sick? What may be lurking inside and how to protect yourself? Coming up on 7 Action News at 11. Stay tuned with Channel 7 Action News for the second half of the show. We will return with part two of Channel 7 Action News with uh, urgent update breaking news on our Michigan roads coming up. We'll have that report coming up shortly on Channel 7 Action News, WXYZ, Detroit. Stay tuned for more.